All right, next question is from Miss Stephanie. How is your day? Yeah, we know you. Okay, um, cheers. I just read an article discussing a potential treatment for COVID-19 that blocks H1 and H2 histamine receptors. Okay, um, does this seem promising to you? Uh, um, yeah. Uh, there's a mechanism where it could work. So unpack all of this stuff. Histamine is a thing. You've probably taken an antihistamine at some point in your life, and you're thinking, yeah, okay, uh, must be involved in allergies. Totally. That's one of the things that it's involved in, like local immune responses, which is what an allergy is. Histamine is also sometimes a neurotransmitter, so it makes nerves send signals. Yeah, neat. Yeah. Um, histamine is also involved in that way, um, I believe in secretion of acid into the gut and so you'll have a lot of acid reflux medicines that are going to be histamine blockers of one sort or another um yeah uh shoot i remember there was something else it did but it's slipping my mind at the moment anyway this this molecule gets around <laughs> and so um the article, uh, I clicked on the link, and it goes to something that's doctor that is giving both Zyrtec, which is not Zantac, the um, uh, acid reflux medication that hits the H2 receptor, Zyrtec, the thing that hits the H1 receptor, <laughs> which is just one of the two histamine receptors, um, uh, and uh, is uh, sold as an anti-allergy medication, like for hay fever, you know, sort of ongoing recurring allergies. And the idea is you can just get in there and you can just block the spot where histi um, histamine would bind. And once you've done that, you, you kind of wipe out the effects that it would have. Yeah, so. Mm. Um, so the doctor's putting that in. Um, let's see, Zyrtec. And he's putting in Pepsid, as in uh, like Pepsid AC, yeah, <laughs> from the old commercials. And from uh, and so uh, one of these is blocking the histidine, histamine, sorry, receptor number one. One of them is blocking histamine receptor number two. And so he's putting them both in there to be an absolute blockade on histamine. I don't know if it'll work, but I understand the logic as to why they think it might work work. They're trying to calm down uh, things like eosinophils and a couple other cells from what they call the innate immune system that are going to either produce um, this uh, histamine or are going to react to it. And there are lots of other cells in the body that will react to it. Uh, veins and arteries are uh, yeah, a key component. Um, yeah, and uh, so the idea makes some sense. This is aimed at slowing down the disease, which is mostly caused by your immune system. It's not going to have any direct effect on the virus, but if you can get rid of the parts of the disease that are actually hurting you, then you can give the immune system more time to make, you know, a better response. It's like, no, go try it again, immune system. Um, and it'll eventually uh, track down the virus and get rid of it. This is the thought. It could work. I am waiting to see a big clinical trial. I know uh, famotidine, which is the uh, oh the drug uh, that we, we would call uh, Pepsid. I know that is in fairly large trials, and there have been small trials with positive results. But we said that about hydroxychloroquine too. Now didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so it's important not to get too far ahead of ourselves uh, on this. It's a thing that could work, but it's important to test these things out to find out what does work um, because yeah COVID-19 doesn't kill everybody who gets it most people do get better and if you have a small sample size like only you know the patients that you can see then it is easy to come to a conclusion based on the little bit of data that you've seen rather than a giant pile of data and so yeah statistical outliers creep in that way it's just it's just a way that things can come out and can look really promising in this case and end up not being promising so i don't want to i don't want to oversell this but there's at least a mechanism by which it could work and so yeah it's not a dumb thing to try by any means um and i'm glad people are trying this and i think we need a bigger carefully controlled study in order to know how well it definitely works um yeah but 
you see a lot of this where doctors are trying out new things and in general I would say this is also a hopeful thing they are doing whatever they can they're trying out whatever ideas seem to make sense in order to try and stop this and just on a personal level I, I really like that not everything that they try is gonna work these are hunches and they're things that are approved as safe enough to use in people and so it's all allowed you you go through a certain amount of regulatory paperwork and it's okay but um, yeah no it's the kind of the spirit of the thing that uh, I really like I guess so thanks very much that was a good question this has been asked Dr. Ben